Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, 11th week of uh, our academic semester and uh, today we will continue with hypothesis testing. Uh, we will return to our third and fourth seminar because uh, uh, at the end of third seminar we started with uh, contingency tables yes, and uh, we used contingency tables uh, only in descriptive way, yes? We calculated some statistic and uh, we uh, think about possible dependence, yes? Today we will return uh, to these issues and we will use statistical tests. We will use the statistical tests. So, inferential statistics of dependence uh, contingency table, uh, rows and columns. So, uh, we'll open our Microsoft Excel sheet. There is example 11.1. You know this uh, example, yes? Uh, you know this example very well. This example is about uh, patients, 93 patients suffering by disease. Uh, and uh, we observe uh, where, the, where these um, uh, patients were vaccinated against some disease and uh, what is the development of the disease. And there is a question, now the development of the disease depend on whether the patient was vaccinated. Uh, at the end of third uh, seminar, uh, we calculated uh, statistic G and uh, according to Pearson coefficient contingency C and Kramer coefficient of contingency V uh, we decided that probably there is dependence yes probably that there is dependence but today we will use exact statistical test uh, test on alpha 5% significance level if there is a relation, yes? So, uh, do you remember uh, contingency table empirical frequencies, NEJ, yes? NEJ. I will rewrite this uh, table on the whiteboard. Uh, patient vaccinated, yes or no, and development of the disease, mild and hard. So, we have here table, contingency table, uh, two times two, with two rows and two columns, yes, with values, uh, 33, uh, 9, 15, and 36. Uh, so, very quickly, yes, because you have this already, you have this already at the end of the third seminar, yes, uh, and at the beginning of fourth seminar. So we need uh, marginal frequencies, yes, marginal frequencies, n, e, dot, and n, dot, j, yes, marginal frequencies. So, 48, 45, 48, 45, summation of values in column, summation of values in column, yes, and here, summation of values in row, summation of values in row, uh, 42, 51, 42, 51, so we need, we need another table, on the right side of this table, we can draw another one, N, E, J with stripe, yes, so there we have empirical frequencies, there we will have uh, expected frequencies, mild and hard. Uh, yes, patient was vaccinated, no. Okay, and according to formula, which you already know because we used uh, this formula, yes, already, we used this formula already. Uh, N E J with stride is calculated like N E dot times N dot J uh, divided by N number of observation. You know that we have 93 patients, yes? 93 patients suffering by a disease. So there is one table, NEJ, there is another table, NEJ with stripe. So, uh, very quickly, we will recalculate uh, the values 
to the table with expected frequencies. 42 times 48 divided by 93 patients. 21.68. 21.68. Uh, 42 and 45. 42 times 45 divided by 93 patients. 20.32. 20.32. Uh, 51 and 48. 51 times 48 divided by 93. Uh, 26.32. 26.32 uh, and 51 and 45. 51 times 45 divided by 93 patients. 24.68. 24.68. Eight. Okay, we have here uh, two tables, uh, empirical frequencies and theoretical or expected frequencies, yes, and a uh, few weeks ago we calculated statistic G, yes, we calculated statistic G, and statistic G is equal to uh, in nominator there is a uh, summation through all rows, uh, summation through all columns, and ej minus and ej with stripe squared. So, summation through all rows, summation through all columns, yes, and there is n e j minus n e j with stripe. This is in squares divided by n e j with stripe. So we will calculate it, these differences. Uh, 33 minus 21.68 squared yes, divided by 21.68 plus 9 minus 20.32 squared divided by 20.32 plus uh, 15 15 minus 26.32 squared divided by 26.32 plus 45 uh, uh, 76 sorry 76 76 36 minus this value 24.68 squared divided by 24.68 okay so statistic G statistic G is equal to so values 5.91 5.914 plus uh, 6.308 6.308 plus uh, 4.87 4.87 uh, and 5.195 5.195 so this value value of statistic G, of test statistic G is equal to 22.288 22.288 Okay, so this is our statistic G and we already calculated this statistic G yeah? because this statistic G was necessary for the calculation of uh, Pearson coefficient of contingency C and Kramer coefficient of contingency V. Uh, but, okay, uh, we will check our formulas and uh, we will set zero hypothesis. Yes, today we will not only calculate uh, Pearson and Kramer coefficient, we will use the test, uh, statistical test. Age zero variables variables uh, are independent are independent every time yes 
every time zero hypothesis in contingency tables and other statistical methods are independent. Yes, yeah. uh, the, the zero hypothesis is independent. Yes, every time independence. Variables are independent. Alternative one, H one, alternative hypothesis, uh, non A zero, dependent. Yes, if you reject zero hypothesis, there is dependence uh, between variables. So H one, dependent. Okay, uh, there was written that we uh, should use 5% alpha, so alpha significance level is equal to 0.05. There is our statistic G. Statistic G is test statistic and we calculated value of this test statistic, 22 point something. Uh, test statistic uh, has chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom mi and mi is calculated mi is calculated like uh, number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one so two minus one times two minus one one times one is equal to one one degree of freedom I will rewrite on the whiteboard uh, rejection region. Why? Because uh, test statistic can be element either of region of acceptance or rejection region. Rejection region is here only one because we have only one alternative hypothesis. Yes? So W alpha. W alpha is equal to for statistic G. Yes, is valid. If, uh, if value of statistic G, value of the statistic G is higher or equal to critical quantile chi square 1 minus alpha, uh, that statistic is element of rejection region and zero hypothesis must be rejected. So uh, we are using 5% alpha, so we will uh, check statistical tables. And we will find we will find a critical value chi squared 0 0.95 with mi equal to one degree of freedom. Yes. So we will open the tables. Table five quantiles of the chi squared distribution p value 0.95. So second column and uh, one degree of freedom, 3.84. 3.84, this is critical value. There is value of your test statistic, test statistic G. If G is higher than critical value, uh, we entered to the rejection region and zero hypothesis is rejected at the 5% significance level yes? at the five percent significance level independence is rejected so there is a dependence there is statistically significant dependence yes whether the patient was vaccinated against the disease and whether the disease uh, was in uh, mild or hard duration. Yeah? So there is dependence. A0 is rejected. Dependence. So uh, we calculated because there is dependence, yes, A0 is rejected. We calculated uh, Pearson coefficient C and Kramer coefficient V because we wanted to characterize the tightness of the dependence, yes? So you know that it's possible to calculate Pearson coefficient C and Kramer coefficient V. Uh, it was uh, on the page, yes, uh, page here. Uh, Pearson C and Kramer V, yes? You already calculated this value. C is equal to 
uh, square root g divided by g plus n, square root 22.288 divided by uh, 22.288 plus 93 patients, yes, 93 patients suffering by disease. So this will be Pearson coefficient C and Kramer coefficient V. Kramer coefficient V is equal to square root and there is statistic G, 22.288 divided by n, 93 patients, times, and there is m minus 1, and m is minimum from rows and columns, yes, you remember, what is smaller, two rows or two columns, two, yes, so two minus one, uh, okay, so Pearson coefficient contingency C, 0 0.44, 0 0.44 and Kramer coefficient V 0 0.49 0 0.49 0 0.49 I already said to you that uh, Kramer coefficient V is a little bit uh, better because maximum is 1 yes we have almost 0 0.5 Yes, some middle dependence. We know that maximum is one. Maximum for the case of Pearson coefficient contingency C must be calculated. Yes, must be calculated according to this formula. Uh, maximum square root, maximum square root from m, minimum from rows and columns minus one divided by m. So uh, two minus one divided by uh, divided by 2. So square root, square root from 0 0.5, 0 0.707, 0 0.707 is possible maximum, yes? Possible maximum for this coefficient, Pearson coefficient C, yes? Uh, okay, so there is a dependence, yes? We used statistical tests at 5% significance level. Uh, zero hypothesis about independence is rejected, yes? Uh, if uh, zero hypothesis is not rejected, there is independence, yes? Independence, but we rejected zero hypothesis, so it depends. Okay, in uh, many countries in the world it's prohibited to drink alcohol uh, before uh, you drive a car. So, uh, you know this example, uh, we already used this example about uh, a relation between the level of alcohol in blood, low, middle and high level, yes, and the speed of reaction in car uh, during driving, good reaction, bad reaction, yes, slow reaction, for example, uh, by uh, 100 randomly selected people. So, we have here a sample, random sample, 100 drivers uh, from population, population of drivers, yes, and we calculated, we already calculated according to uh, statistic G and uh, Pearson uh, and Kramer coefficient, Pearson C and Kramer V, that there is dependence, some dependence, yes? In descriptive way, we calculated the, the strength of this dependence, yes? Uh, many weeks ago, but today we will use statistical tests. We will use statistical tests uh, because zero hypothesis, age zero, climbs, uh, variables are independent, yes? Zero hypothesis is independent. Independent. Independent between variables, yes? Uh, level of alcohol in blood and speed of the reaction. Alternative hypothesis, H1, is dependent.
Okay, so we have zero and alternative hypothesis. We will use significance level alpha 5%. Alpha is equal to 0.05. What is necessary for us? Uh, it's necessary to calculate expected frequencies, theoretical frequencies, yes? Uh, for the calculation of expected frequencies, we need marginal frequencies. Uh, from the table of empirical frequencies, marginal side frequencies, yes, frequencies from the side, um, summation of rows and summation of columns. So, uh, there we have uh, frequencies N, E, J, yes, N, E, J, uh, speed of direction, good and bad, level of alcohol, low, middle, and high. So this table, yes, size of this table is 3 times 2, 3 rows, 2 columns, yes, 3 rows, 2 columns, okay, n e dot and n dot j, uh, 53, 12, 53, 12, uh, 5, 15, 5, 15, 2 and 13, 2 and 13. So in total, you know that we have 100 randomly selected drivers, yes? 100 drivers. Marginal frequencies, marginal frequencies, side frequencies, summation of rows and summation of columns. 53 plus 12, 65. 5 plus 15, 20, 2 plus 13, uh, 15, yes, uh, 65 plus 20 plus 15 is 100, uh, 53 plus 5 plus 2 is 60, drivers, and 12, 15 and 13, 40 drivers, again, 60 plus 40, 100, so this is our table, with empirical frequencies, and we will recalculate this according to formula N E J with stripe is equal to N E dot times N dot J divided by N. Yes, we recalculate this table to table with expected theoretical frequencies. Yes. Uh, the theoretical frequencies L, E, J with stripe. So good reaction, bad reaction, low, middle and high level of alcohol. So tables are prepared. Okay, and uh, we can start. Yes, 65 and 60. 65 uh, times 60 divided by 100. Yes, first value. Another value, 65 and 40. 65 times 40 divided by 100. Another value, 20 and 60. 20 times 60 divided by 100. Yes, and you can continue. 20 and 40. 20 times 40 divided by 100. 15 and 60. 15 times 60 divided by 100 and 15 and 40. 15 times 40 divided by 100. One, two, three, four, five, six values, yes? And the result, 39, 26, 39, 26, uh, 12, 8, 12, 8, uh, 9, 6. 9, 6. Okay. I can delete these uh, steps yes, because we already know 
How can we calculate uh, expected or theoretical frequencies? And now uh, we will calculate statistic G, test, st value of test statistic G. So I will delete zero and alternative hypothesis because we need a space here and uh, here at the at the, bo uh, at the top of the of the uh, whiteboard. I will calculate statistic G. G is equal to there is summation through rows, summation through columns, yes, and there is n e j minus n e j with stripe squared divided by n e j with stripe, yes. Uh, test statistic. We will calculate this value of the test statistic. So we can start. Uh, 53, 53 minus 39 squared divided by 39 plus uh, 12 minus 26 squared divided by 26 plus uh, 5 minus 12, 5 minus 12 squared divided by 12 plus uh, 15 and 8 15 minus 8 squared divided by 8 plus 2 and 9 2 minus 9 squared divided by 9 plus uh, 13 and 6 13 minus 6 squared divided by 6. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So again, 6 values. So value of the statistic G uh, is equal to 5.0 point uh, uh, 5.026. 5.026 plus uh, second value 7.538 7.538 plus uh, 4.083 4.083 plus uh, 6.125 6.125 6.125 6.125 uh, 5.444 and 8.167 8.167 So the sum of these values 36.384 36 36.384 so this is value of the test statistic 76.384 and we use this statistic we use this statistic uh, for calculation of uh, Pearson coefficient of contingency C and Kramer coefficient of contingency V yes and we calculated we calculated the strength of the dependence but today we will use zero and alternative hypothesis. Zero hypothesis, independence. Alternative hypothesis, dependence. And we will test. We will test this dependence on the 5% significance level. So, zero hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, alpha significance level 0.05. Statistic G, value of the statistic G is equal to 36.384 uh, and this value can be element either of uh, region of acceptance or rejection region. So rejection region will be uh, rewritten on the, on the whiteboard W alpha is equal to for statistic G. If statistic G is higher or equal to critical quantile value, uh, critical value uh, from tables of chi square distribution, one minus alpha percent, with 
degrees of freedom ni, uh, which is calculated like uh, number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. We have three rows and two columns. Three minus one times two minus one. So two times one is equal to two, two degrees of freedom. So in the tables, in statistical tables, we will find 95% quantile of he square distribution uh, with two degrees of freedom. Yes. Uh, so there we have tables. 95% second column and 2 degrees of freedom second row, 5.99. So 5.99, 5.99 is critical value. If your G statistic is higher than critical value, uh, zero hypothesis is rejected at the 5% significance level. This is true, yes? This inequality is true, so zero hypothesis independence is rejected, rejected, so it depends, it statistically depends, so it depends. Yes, there is a dependence between the level of alcohol in blood and speed of the reaction in car, yes? And we calculated the strength of this dependence because it statistically depends, yes? Uh, we calculated Pearson coefficient C and Kramer coefficient V. Pearson C is square root from there is a nominator 36.384 divided by 100 plus 36.384. Yes. And the Kramer coefficient V is equal to square root and there is 36.384 divided by uh, sample size 100 times uh, m minus 1, minimum from rows and columns, yes? So what is smaller, 3 or 2? Two? 2. 2 minus 1, yes? So Pearson C and Kramer coefficient V uh, is equal to 0 0.517, 0 0.517, and the Kramer coefficient is 0 0.603, 0 0.603. Uh, we don't know the potential maximum, yes, potential maximum of uh, Pearson coefficient C. So we will calculate this maximum at square root from, and there is, uh, there is uh, M times, uh, M times, um, uh, square root n minus 1 divided by n, yes, uh, m minus 1 divided by m. In our situation, uh, 2 minus 1 divided by 2, so again the same maximum like before, uh, 1 divided by uh, 2 and square root from this value, 0 0.707, yes, uh, 0 0.707 is potential maximum uh, for this type of contingency table. Yes. So uh, we know that there is dependence. Yes, because we rejected zero hypothesis. Uh, statistically significant dependence. Uh, we calculated Pearson coefficient C and Kramer coefficient V, so we are able to characterize the strength of this dependence. Yes? If zero hypothesis is uh, not rejected, there is independence. Yes? Independence between level of alcohol in blood and speed of reaction in car.
Okay, another situation about analysis of dependence. Uh, you already see this example about uh, teachers yes, and students. We observed 12 students, how many points they got uh, from the final test. Well, used from 0 to 60. Uh, four of these students uh, were always attended the classes of one of three teachers, Mr. McDonald, Mr. King and Mr. Benz. And uh, uh, we already calculated, we already calculated that uh, there, is, there is a dependence, a potential dependence, because we try to calculate effect size, yes, effect size, uh, which was calculated on the basis of uh, some sums of squares, yes. Uh, so, today we will use exact statistical tests. If you check your formulas, uh, we will use uh, this table, analysis of variance, uh, then zero and alternative hypothesis. I will write zero and alternative hypothesis on the whiteboard. We will use zero hypothesis A0, uh, which climbs mu. So, expected number of points, or average number of points, uh, in the class of Mr. McDonald, Mu McDonald, is equal to Mu expected number of points, average number of points, in class of uh, Mr. King. So, Mu of Mr. King, and this is equal to mu, average number of points, expected number of points, yes, in the class of Mr. Uh, Benz. Mr. Benz. Okay, so in your formulas, you have written mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3, yes, and this can be equal to mu k, we need at least three, at least three factors, at least three uh, groups, yes, group is better word, groups, uh, because we have 12 students, yes, grouped to uh, three groups, yes, three is the minimum, we have three, Mr. McDonald, Mr. King and Mr. Benz, so uh, this hypothesis H0 is independence, yes? This means independence. Independence, yes? If mu1, mu of Mr. McDonald, is equal to mu2, mu of Mr. King, and this is equal to mu of Mr. Benz, yes? All means are equal, yes, uh, it's independent, yes, it's independent. If you attended the class at Mr. McDonald, Mr. King or Mr. Benz, yes, alternative hypothesis, H1, non H0, and this means dependent, yes, dependent. So, uh, do you remember contingency tables? Contingency tables, yes, number of rows, number of columns, zero hypothesis was independent every time. In the case of analysis of variance, ANOVA method, zero hypothesis is independent, yes, equality of at least three means, yes, equality of at least three means. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, we will use significance level alpha, we will use alpha equal to 0 0.05, 5% significance level, and uh, for the calculation of uh, test statistic, test statistic F and its value, value of test statistic, we need two sums of squares, yes, treatment sum of squares, and error sum of squares. We already calculated yes, these 
uh, sums of squares manually. Yes. Uh, many weeks ago we calculated this. So today, uh, yes, there we have uh, formulas. Uh, not for regression analysis above above contingency tables analysis of variance uh, total sum of squares is equal to treatment sum of squares and error sum of squares as treatment and error sum of squares uh, were calculated manually so today we will use excel only so you have my uh, data sheet, yes, you have my Excel uh, with this example. So we will uh, and we will install analysis tool pack. So please click on the file button, file button, and on the bottom you have options. Yes, the last uh, here is options. We have options. So you will see this window, and then uh, here uh, on the left side we have add-ins. So you can click on add-ins, and on the bottom of this window you have manage Excel add-ins, and there is go button with three dots. So please click on go button with three dots, and select here analysis tool path. After you will click on OK, and on the data leaf, data leaf. On the right side, right top corner uh, of the screen, you will see data analysis. So please select data analysis, and uh, this method which we saw is one way ANOVA. One way ANOVA, and uh, in this analysis toolpath, this is called ANOVA single factor because we have factor, one factor feature, yes, the difference between quality of teachers yes so single factor ANOVA okay and uh, we will select uh, the data input range you can select these values without labels or with labels yes so if you select uh, values with labels yes number one number two number three data uh, is in columns yes so grouped by columns it's all right and uh, we selected labels in first row. Alpha 0.05, 5 percent is all right, yes, because we know that we uh, must use 5 percent significance level. Okay, uh, there we will export results. You can click on OK, and uh, you will see results which we already calculated, yes. Individual averages, yes, individual averages uh, for particular teachers, Mr. McDonald, Mr. King, and Mr. Benz, yes, you can see that there is difference between averages, yes. This method, ANOVA, uh, has in its zero hypothesis equality of means, yes, mu of Mr. McDonald is equal to mu of Mr. King, and this is equal to mu of Mr. Benz. Uh, we selected, we selected n equal to 12 students, yes? 12 students, for example, from all universities, yes? From, I don't know, 680 students, which is equal to population of all students, yes? Uh, who uh, have statistics in the particular semester. Yeah? So this is only our sample. We can see that these means, these averages, yes, sample averages uh, are not equal, but this is not the final answer uh, for our analysis. We must use statistical test at the uh, significance level, yes? significance level five uh, percent. We can do this uh, random experiment, this uh, random sample. Yes, we can repeat this sample uh, to infinity. Yes, we can infinity times select twelve students from six hundred eighty one thousand. One and a half thousand potential students of statistics, yes, and uh, in a 95 percent, 
in 95% of all cases, of all situations, yes, uh, we require to be sure, yes, if means are equal, yes, statistically equal or not, yes. We don't know if zero hypothesis uh, is rejected or not, yes, we don't know this now, so we will continue, yes. We can see that we have here differences, but we must use appropriate uh, appropriate significance level. So, uh, you can see ANOVA table, uh, ANOVA table source of variation, SS is sum of squares, yes? Sum of squares uh, between groups, within groups, and total. Uh, we know that uh, in the first first row, yes, there can be word theoretical, theoretical, or according to your formula treatment, yes, so this is first source of variability, yes, theoretical or treatment source of variability. Uh, between groups, within groups, error, yes, error or residual, error or residual. So this is second source of variability and total, yes, total. Okay, so now. We have everything, yes, because in formulas you can see that Fisher F statistic, Fisher F statistic is uh, designed on the ratio of treatment sum of squares divided by k minus 1 and error sum of squares divided by n minus k. So we will calculate value, we will calculate value of Fisher F statistic in the denominator. Treatment sum of squares. So, uh, treatment sum of squares from Excel. Uh, 181.167. 100, 181.167. And this is divided by k minus 1. What is k minus 1? Uh, k minus 1 is the number of degrees of freedom mi1 and uh, we know that mi1 mi1 k minus 1 is the number of groups minus 1 we have three teachers yes we have mr mcdonald mr king and mr Benz, three teachers so 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. In another table, you will find this value 2 uh, in the row uh, between groups, source of variation, DF, degrees of freedom, yes? And the second one, second value, which is here, uh, in the row within groups, source of variation, error residual, yes, 9. This is me 2. Me 2 can be find here, me2, and me2 is n minus k. In our situation, 12 students minus number of teachers, 12 minus 3. Yes, so there is me2, 12 minus 3, and the result is 9. Yes, we don't need this value 11 for anything, yeah? this, is, uh, this value 11 is useless here. So, uh, what I need, I also need uh, sum of squares, error sum of squares, 107.5, 107.5, 107.5. So, we have everything in uh, our formula for calculation of uh, F statistic, value of F statistic, yes? So, uh, if we continue with this table, yes, nominator and denominator is calculated here in the column of mean squares, ms, mean squares. What does it mean? Calculated from squares. 
There is sum of squares divided by some sink, and there is sum of squares divided by something. It's variance, yes? Variance. So uh, there we can find the treatment or theoretical variance. Treatment variance which is divided by error variance, yes? Treatment variance divided by error variance. So Fisher value of this Fisher F statistic, uh, 90.583, 90.583. Five eight three is divided by is divided by eleven point nine four four eleven point nine four four yes final value yes is uh, this value in the column of f stat yes f statistic uh, f f f seven point five 90.583 divided by 11.944 is 7.584. 7.584. Okay. Uh, we use only we use only sums of squares. Yes, sums of squares for the calculation of effect size, yes? Effect size was calculated, effect size, effect size was calculated like treatment sum of squares, S, S, T, R, treatment sum of squares, divided by S, S, sum of squares total, yes? We only calculated this effect size, nothing more, yes? Uh, but Today we have here Fisher statistic F, Fisher F test, and uh, there is zero and alternative hypothesis, zero hypothesis independence, yes, alternative hypothesis dependence. If a value of that statistic is element of rejection region at a particular level of significance, zero hypothesis must be rejected. So I will rewrite this rejection region on the whiteboard. So there will be rewrite it, rejection region, W alpha. W alpha is equal to, for statistic F, yes, if value of F statistic is higher or equal to uh, F1 minus alpha, F1 minus alpha, percent quantile from the tables, yes, uh, zero hypothesis is rejected. We are using 5% alpha, yes, 5% significance level. So, in tables, we must find F0.95, 95% quantile of Fisher's metacore distribution with degrees of freedom ni1 and ni2. We already know that degrees of freedom ni1 is equal to 2 and ni2 is equal to 12 minus 3, 9. Yes, 2 and 9 degrees of freedom. So the value of this critical quantile value uh, from the tables will be found in your statistical tables. Uh, Okay, here, first page, which is in landscape format, yes, first page in landscape format. If you zoom this uh, page uh, for better uh, visibility, we will find degrees of freedom, mi1, mi2, mi1 equal to 2, and mi2 equal to 9. So, critical value will be 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 4.257, 
five, seven. Okay, so this is critical value, yes? So, zero and alternative hypothesis. We calculated value of test statistic. If test statistic, which is uh, designed on the ratio of two variants, this is the reason why this method is called ANOVA, analysis of variance method, ANOVA method. Uh, if this uh, value of the statistic is higher than critical quantile, critical value, zero hypothesis must be rejected at the 5% significance level. 7.5 is higher than 4.2, yes, 7.5 is higher than critical value. So, uh, we entered to a rejection region, W alpha, and zero hypothesis, zero hypothesis, independence is rejected at the 5% significance level. So, it depends, yes, there is dependence, uh, teacher, yes, the factor of teacher depends on the number of achieved points from the final task, yes, there is dependence. We calculated, we proved the dependence, yes. If we repeated our sample, yes, and 12 students, infinity times, infinity times, yes, 12 students from all university, yes, in 95% of, of all cases, yes, uh, we will see that means are different, yes? Means are different. Mean of Mr. McDonald is different from mean of Mr. King, yes? Or Mr. Benz. But we don't know. We don't know which mean is higher or lower. We just prove inequality. At least in one case, we proved inequality, yes? Inequality of at least three means. Okay, so zero hypothesis was rejected. Uh, so there is dependence. Uh, we use Microsoft Excel, yes? Analysis tool pack. Uh, for the calculation of uh, partial values, for example, sums of squares, yes, necessary for our Fisher F statistic, test statistic. Uh, if you check this ANOVA table, F statistic is calculated here, yes, like a ratio of two variances, mean squares. Uh, critical value, if you write to the procedure of uh, ANOVA method, 5% significance level, 5% alpha, Microsoft Excel will provide to you uh, exact value, exact critical value from the tables, yes? So there is critical value from the tables, 95% critical quantile of Fisher's Nedecor distribution with 2 and 9 degrees of freedom, yes? You can see a lot of decimals, there is calculated exact value uh, from Fisher's Nedecor tables. Uh, so, you can check only these two values, yes, Fisher F statistic and critical value from the tables calculated by Microsoft Excel. If F statistic is higher than critical value, zero hypothesis is rejected at a particular level of significance. Another very important information for you is p-value. p-value, the probability. Uh, we know that uh, if p value, if p value is higher or equal to alpha significance level, zero hypothesis is not rejected. H zero is not rejected. Okay, if p value is higher or equal to alpha, set alpha, yes, we set alpha at 5% significance level. So if this p value is higher than 5%, 
Zero hypothesis is not rejected at this level of significance. There is 0.012. This is smaller than 0.05. Yes, 0.012 is not higher or equal. Yes, this inequality is not true. Yes, so a zero is rejected at this level of significance, 5% significance level. So if you have available Microsoft Excel uh, and if you calculate this ANOVA method also with p-value, you can decide, yes, you can decide uh, on the basis of this p-value. If p-value is higher, then your set level of significance, for example, 5% significance level, H0 is not rejected. Yes, H0 is rejected only if this p value is below significance level, below your alpha. You can set alpha on 1%, 5%, 10%. Yes, commonly we are using 5% significance level, so this p value is below alpha, H0 is rejected. Don't. Yes, you don't have to solve anything else. You can just check p-value. If you have p-value available. Uh, okay, so there is dependence. Uh, many weeks ago, we calculated effect size. Uh, the size, the strength of the dependence. Yes, effect size. So we can use uh, the values, sums of squares. What we need? Treatment and total. Yes, treatment and total sum of squares, and we can calculate effect size, uh, the coefficient of determination, coefficient of existing dependence. So effect size is equal to uh, where is uh, our treatment and the total sum of squares in our table. Yes, so treatment 100. 81.167 181.167 uh, divided by uh, total sum of squares 288 288.667 uh, 667 okay result is uh, 0.628 0 0.628, 0 0.628. Okay, this effect size, yes, uh, in uh, all the formulas, yes, in all the version of formulas, we used p squared, yes, some coefficient of determination, proportion of determination, proportion of existing dependence, yes, we reject it. Zero hypothesis independent, so it depends, yes. And we know that this coefficient, yeah, this coefficient is element of uh, range zero and one, yes. The dependence is stronger if this effect size is closer to one, yes. If this effect size is close to one, the dependence is stronger. So you can see we have 0 0.628. So uh, there is probably strong dependence, yes, or something higher than middle strong dependence. Yes, you know you can individually, you can individually uh, comment, yes, comment uh, this coefficient, it's subjective, yes. Uh, this strength, this interpretation is subjective. It depends on you, yes, how you verbally uh, command the, si uh, the size, command the size of this uh, coefficient effect size. Yes. So there is dependence. We calculated the strength, and this dependence exists on five percent significance level.
Okay, do you remember this example? We already solved this example about the consumption of three types of petrol. Yes, consumption using three types of petrol. So, uh, the consumption using three types of petrol was tested using experiment. There were done five uh, experiments with each petrol. So, uh, we can imagine that uh, we are using petrol uh, from Shell, OMV, and a jeep, yes, for example. So, we have here three types of petrol. Uh, there are done five experiments uh, with each petrol. So, according to the situation, we know that K Number of groups, yes, number of groups is equal to three, three types of petrol, and five experiment with each type of petrol. So three uh, times five is equal to fifteen. Fifteen is n sample size, yes, uh, size of our sample random experiment, yes, we randomly selected. Uh, these observations. So, uh, Shell oil power and uh, there is annual table you uh, already seen, yes, from the previous example how this annual table looks like. Uh, you could uh, see this uh, annual table in week number four, yes, in our fourth seminar for our academic semester, and there was written that uh, the F mean square and f, f value, yes, you will see in week 11. Today we have week 11, so uh, we will fill this ANOVA table, yes, fill in the ANOVA table and try to decide on 5% significance level whether the consumption depends on the type of petrol. So, we will set zero and alternative hypothesis. Zero hypothesis, A zero climbs. Mu, average consumption, yes? Average consumption of petrol, uh, of petrol from shell. Mu of shell is equal to mu, average consumption, yes? Expected consumption of uh, petrol from OMV. O M V, and this is equal to mu average consumption, expected consumption of petrol from a jeep. Yes. So we have here zero hypothesis, and we know that zero hypothesis is independence. Yes. Independence of the type of petrol on consumption. Yes. So this is in. The pen dance. This is independence. Alternative hypothesis H1 is dependence. Non H0, it means dependence. Yes, type of petrol. Type of petrol from the petrol station depends on consumption, on average consumption of petrol in car, yes? So there is zero and alternative hypothesis. Uh, there is a uh, calculated uh, ANOVA table uh, with uh, deleted cells, yes? With deleted cells, but we already know that if you calculate ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, you have here source of variability, source of variation, and three rows, yes? Source of variation uh, and three sources between groups, within groups, and total, yes? And we know that between groups can be called model, or treatment, or theoretical, etc. Yes, model, treatment, theoretical, explained, yes, explained the solutions of variation within group, error, residual, unexplained, yes, error, residual, unexplained, etc. and total is total. So, three sources of variation and there is SS, 
sum of squares, yes? Sum of squares in Microsoft Excel, this is uh, denoted by SS. Uh, so, for the calculation of uh, test statistic, we need to know treatment sum of squares and error sum of squares. We have calculated total and error sum of squares, but we know that uh, SS sum of squares total is calculated like summation SS treatment TR plus SS error. So if we calculate the difference, difference between total and error sum of squares, uh, we will obtain uh, treatment sum of squares, yes? So S, S, T, R, treatment sum of squares is equal to 0 0.1707, uh, 0 0.1793, uh, Okay, we can continue. Uh, for Fisher F statistics. So, uh, in nominator, there is treatment sum of squares. Uh, so, I will rewrite this here uh, 0 0.1 point, zero point uh, oh, uh, nine three divided by something and in denominator we have uh, error sum of squares and uh, from our table error sum of squares 0 0.080 0 0.080 0 280 uh, 280 so treatment sum of squares and error sum of squares treatment sum of squares is divided by uh, mi 1, k minus 1, yes, degrees of freedom, mi 1, mi 1, which is calculated like k minus 1. Uh, this is called degrees of freedom, df. We have two degrees of freedom, mi 1 and mi 2. And this first degree of freedom, k minus 1, number of groups, three groups, shell, OMV, and Ajip, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. Yeah, so that will be value 3 minus uh, 1, 3 minus 1, the result is uh, 2 degrees of freedom, yes? Okay, and in the denominator, there is error sum of squares, yes? Error sum of squares is divided by n minus k. This is mi2, yes, mi2. Mi2 is calculated like n minus k. In our situation, 15 observations, 15 observations minus 3 groups, yes, 3 groups. So the result is 12. So we know that we have Fisher and distribution with degrees of freedom mi1 equal to 2 and mi2 equal to 12. Yes? Okay, so this is value of F statistic and we know that this F statistic uh, is based on ratio uh, treatment variance. So this box on the top, yes, there is treatment variance and there is error variance or it can be called between groups variance, between groups variance divided by within groups variance. Do you remember analysis of variance from the beginning of our semester? Uh, decomposition of variance, decomposition decomposition of variance to two groups, between group variance and within group variance, this is the same, yes? Two groups, between group and within group. So, mean square, mean square, uh, mean calculated, mean calculated from the square is variance. So, nominator, 0 point, uh, 0 point, uh, 8, 5, 247 0 0.08528 uh, 
to uh, 4, 7, 4, 7 divided by uh, 0 0.00, 0 0.00699. Okay, so first variant and uh, uh, 669. 669 six, six, uh, six, Okay, 0 0.085247 divided by 0 0.00669 uh, Two variances Okay, and the result it is f-statistic So there will be f-statistic f-statistic is equal to uh, 12.742 12.742 Okay, so we filled our table Yes, if you have data, raw data And if you have Microsoft Excel You will see this table Yes, this filled table Also with p-value And calculated critical value from the tables There is not column for p-value we, are, we don't know, uh, in this seminar, yes, we don't know how to calculate p-value. It's possible, yes? I know formula for the calculation of p-value, yes? Significance of this test. But it's not issue, it's not topic uh, for you for this course. So we will not calculate p-value. There is not written p-value, so uh, for the decision if uh, zero hypothesis uh, is rejected or not, we must find critical value from the tables. Yes, so we calculate it at statistic, and we must find the critical value in the tables. Why? Because this F statistic can be element either of region of acceptance or rejection region. Rejection region W alpha is equal to uh, for F statistic, yes, is uh, valid, is true. If F statistic, value of statistic is higher or equal to critical quantile F 1 minus alpha percent from the tables, yes, zero hypothesis is rejected. So we will find in tables, we will find F 0.95. 95% quantile of Fisher Snedecor distribution with degrees of freedom Ni1, Ni2 equal to 2 and 12. So if you open, if you check your table, the first table which is in landscape format, landscape format, quantiles F0.95, degrees of freedom Ni1, second column, yes, and Ni2, uh, 12. Row. So that is value 3.885. 3.885. 3 so this is critical value, F critical. If your F statistic, value of F statistic is higher than critical value, zero hypothesis is rejected at a particular level of significance, so in our situation it's true, this inequality is true, so this zero hypothesis is rejected at 5% significance level, so there is dependence, yes, dependence, it depends, yes, uh, there is a dependence, uh, of the type of petrol, yes, dependence of the type of petrol on average consumption in the car. So uh, we filled in our table and we decided on 5% significance level that the consumption depends on the type of petrol, yeah? so there is dependence. Uh, we are also able to calculate effect size. It's not written here, yes, it's not written here, uh, but we will do this, yes, because it depends. So uh, we will calculate effect size like ratio treatment, sum of squares, 
and the total sum of squares. So effect size is equal to uh, treatment sum of squares 0 0.1704900 divided by uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.773, 0 0.773. And again, we know that this effect size is from range 0 and 1. Result is 0 0.68, 0 0.680. Yeah, so again, it's higher than one half, 0 0.5, so it's uh, higher than uh, higher than uh, 2 divided by 3, yeah, so more than 66.6 percent. Yeah, so you can imagine, you can imagine the strength of the dependence. Yes, uh, strong, middle strong dependence. Yes, you can. You can individually, yes, uh, subjective, uh, this evaluation is subjective, it depends on you, yes, because, because everybody has different feeling of this coefficient, yes, but we know, in general, we know that this coefficient, 0 0.68, is between 0 and 1, yes, and interpretation, verbal interpretation, depends on you. So, there is dependence. We will continue with another example. Uh, again, you already know this example. 15 boys yes, at elementary school. Uh, at 15 boys at this school, there was mentioned how many of uh, push-ups and squats they are able to do. We expected that uh, if the boy is strong, he is able to do a lot of squats and a lot of push-ups. Uh, if the boy is weak, yes, he is probably not able to do a lot of squats and uh, a lot of push-ups. Uh, so, we already calculated a correlation coefficient, yes, the statistic. Yes, measuring the strength of dependence between one and other variable. Yes, linear, linear correlation. So today we will calculate again this correlation coefficient and we will test. Yes, we will use the test at five percent significance level that this coefficient, this correlation, calculated correlation, is really significant, statistically significant, at a particular level of significance. So, we have 15 observations, yes, n is equal to 15, 15 boys. Uh, for correlation coefficient, r, r, x, y, yes, correlation coefficient r, uh, we are recurring at the beginning of our semester, we need the means, only the means, yes, in nominator, there is x y mean minus x mean times y mean. Yeah? So this is nominator, and you know that in nominator this is covariance. Yes, covariance is in a nominator, and uh, in denominator there is square root, square root from multiplication of two variances, yes? There is variance of x, of variable x, and there is variance of variable y, yes? And we have here, in the first parenthesis, uh, in the first parenthesis, x squared mean minus x mean squared times, and there is y squared mean minus uh, y mean squared. Okay, so uh, we have this uh, table in Microsoft Excel, so we will solve all these statistics, the means, yes, in Microsoft Excel. We need uh, mean from variable x, mean from variable y, mean from multiplication, variable x and y. So, you can use function average, yes, and uh, variable x, 
uh, will be set on squats, for example, yes, and variable y uh, was set on push-ups, yes, again, for example, there is just uh, mutual linear uh, correlation between variable x and y, and it doesn't uh, depend, yes, if uh, squats or push-ups is x or y, yes, just just uh, variable one and variable two, yes, but they are variable one and variable two. So we have here x mean, y mean, uh, the mean calculated from multiplication, x and y, yes, you can see multiplication x times y, yes, and from this is calculated mean, uh, average, yes, average. And uh, finally, uh, we need another two columns, yes, another two columns, x squared and y squared, yes, x squared and y squared, uh, second power of variable x, for example, squats, yes, variable x powered by 2, and uh, in the next column will be second power of variable y. Yes, so another two columns. So we have column x, column y, multiplication of column x and y, second power of variable x, second power of variable uh, y. So five columns, uh, five columns in summation, yes? Uh, okay, and now we have uh, everything everything calculated, everything necessary is calculated. So, uh, I will delete uh, this, or not, I will write it below because we have enough space. So, R x y is equal to, in the denominator, covariance, 108.8, uh, 108.8 minus uh, 3.2, 3.2 times uh, 23.067, 23.067. This is divided by the square root, the first variance, variance of variable x. Uh, so 15.467, 15.467. Six seven uh, minus three point two squared minus three point two squared. So there will be first variance times and second variance variance of variable y uh, eight hundred four point two six seven eight hundred four point two six seven minus uh, 23.067, 23.067 squared, yes, okay, if you calculate this, you will see a result, correlation coefficient 0 0.928, 0 0.928, yes, you already seen this result, this correlation coefficient. We know that correlation coefficient is element of range from z, uh, minus 1, from minus 1 and 1, yes? If correlation coefficient is close to minus 1, there is strong, strong negative, strong negative uh, linear dependence between variable x and variable y, yes? If correlation coefficient is close to plus one, there is strong positive, positive dependence, positive correlation between variable x and variable y, yes? And if this coefficient is close to zero, uh, variables x and y are linear independent, yes? Uh, there is no correlation, no dependence between variable x and variable y. Uh, our coefficient is close to 1, so probably there is strong positive correlation, strong positive dependence. If the boy is strong, he is able to do a lot of squats and a lot of push-ups. But 
We will use statistical tests. Yes, uh, we will use statistical tests, and we will test this correlation, the, the strength of this correlation. Zero hypothesis. H zero zero hypothesis. I will delete uh, this part from the whiteboard, and we will set the zero and alternative hypothesis. This uh, raw, uh, small Greek letter raw, uh, is uh, estimate of the correlation coefficient. Yes. So, Mr. Hellman using raw, we can imagine that there is written H zero uh, raw x y is equal to zero. In our situation, you can imagine this uh, formula like correlation coefficient r x y is equal to zero. Yes, correlation is equal to zero. There is no correlation. There is no dependence. Yes, zero hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis h one uh, rho x y estimate of correlation coefficient is equal to zero. In our situation, we can write correlation is not equal to zero. Yes? Okay, so this is zero and alternative hypothesis. Uh, test statistic uh, is student t test. Yes? Student t test. So we must calculate the value of this student t test, of this student t statistic. So t statistic, t statistic is equal to correlation coefficient r times square root, and there is n minus 1. And this is divided by square root uh, n minus 2. Sorry, n minus 2. Do you know why is here n minus 2 instead of n minus 1, uh, like in different analyses? Because we have two variables, yes? Two variables, variable x and variable y, yes? So there's n minus 2. And this is divided by uh, square root, square root 1 minus correlation coefficient square. Yes, uh, there is second power uh, because uh, correlation coefficient can be positive or negative. Yes, uh, the value of this t statistic can be positive or negative, but the sign, the sign of this t test, yes, uh, about the sign of this t test, decide this value r correlation coefficient in nominator, yes? This can be positive or negative, yes? Uh, this is positive every time, so only this decides about the sign of t test, the value of t statistics. So, we will use our uh, values, so uh, correlation coefficient 0 0.928 times square root uh, and 15 boys, 15 boys minus 2, yes? And this is divided by, there is square root 1 minus 0 0.928 squared, yes? So we will calculate the value of the test statistic t, and the value of test statistic t is equal to 8.951. 8.951. Yes, so this is value of student t statistic. Okay, I will delete this formula for the calculation of correlation coefficient and uh, we know, we already know that test statistic, yes, can be element either of region of acceptance or rejection region, region of acceptance V and rejection region W. There is rejection region only one because we have only one alternative hypothesis. So I will rewrite W alpha equal to for T 
t test for value of statistic t is valid if absolute value of your t statistic is higher or equal to critical quantile from the tables t1 minus alpha divided by 2 uh, we enter to the rejection region and zero hypothesis must be rejected student t test student t distribution using degrees of freedom ni degrees of freedom ni and ni is calculated like n minus 2 n minus 2 it's the same n minus 2 like here yes n 15 boys minus two variables variable x and variable y so in our situation 15 boys minus 2 is equal to 13 and uh, that was written that uh, we must use alpha equal to 0 0.05 5% significance level so we will find critical critical value t critical critical value from the tables uh, 0 0.975 97.5% quantile of the student T distribution with degrees of freedom ni equal to 13. Yes, so we will check our statistical tables. We will find the quantiles of student T distribution, quantiles of the student's distribution TP p-value 0.975, so the column in the middle, and uh, 13 degrees of freedom. So critical value will be 2.16, 2.16, 2.16, it's critical value, critical value, so if you check uh, rejection region, if absolute value of your uh, t-statistic is higher than this critical value, zero hypothesis is rejected. Our t-test is equal to 8.951. This is higher than 2.16. So this inequality, this inequality is true. We entered to the rejection region and at the 5% significance level, zero hypothesis is rejected. We rejected zero hypothesis, which claimed that correlation is equal to zero. No, it's not true. Correlation is not equal to zero. Correlation coefficient is positive and its value is 9.5. Uh, 0.928, 0.928, strong correlation. Do you know why is here absolute value of student t-test, absolute value of this student t-statistic? Because of this R, because of this correlation coefficient in denominator, yes? Correlation can be positive or negative. If correlation will be minus 0 0.99 strong negative strong negative correlation this t test will be negative yes and therefore uh, we will use here absolute value yes if absolute value is higher than critical value from the tables we enter to the rejection region and we reject zero hypothesis yes so there is really strong correlation between number of squats and number of push-ups. So this is the end of uh, 11th seminar, uh, the end of 11th week of our academic semester, hypothesis testing. Uh, so uh, next week in seminar 12, we will continue with hypothesis testing, we will continue with uh, regression models and with testing of these regression models. Yeah? So again, we will return to examples 
which you already seen before in uh, week number four, week number five, yes, etc. And uh, we'll continue with hypothesis testing. Uh, you could see that it's uh, uh, very interesting, difficult, but interesting. So I hope that everything is clear. This is the end of 11th seminar and uh, I hope that I will see you next week. So have a nice day and bye bye.